All of the young kids, all, they were all black, they were all running downstairs to the foyer, and here was Malcolm coming in through the front door. No guards. He was there just by himself. I was quite surprised because it was a dangerous time for him. But all of the kids, they were maybe between 17 and 25, that age. And they were such energetic kids who, they really, like, mobbed him with admiration, I guess, that everybody wanted to shake his hands. And as I watched about 25 yards away, I, I felt so bad that, that I wasn't black, that this should be just a black thing. But the more I see them all so happily shaking his hands and Malcolm so happy, I said, gosh darn it, I'm going to try to meet him somehow. And so I kept getting closer, and I said, if he looks up once, I'm going to run over there and, and see if I could shake his hand. And so that's what I did. There was a time where he, maybe he didn't look up, but I may have just thought he did or wished he did. And so then I yelled and said, Malcolm, can I shake your hands too? Because all these young people were. And he said, what for? And I, I didn't know first what to say, what for. I said, um, because what you're doing for your people. And he said, and what am I doing for my people? Now I thought, what would I say to that? And so I said, you're giving directions. And then he just changed and said, uh, he came out of that, the center of that, you know, where everybody was there, came out and he stuck his hands out, so I ran and grabbed it. I, could, I couldn't believe that I was shaking Malcolm X's hand, and I was just so sorry that my son, who was 16, who wanted to come so much, but um, he had an exam in high school, and he didn't think he could miss that exam, so he missed seeing Malcolm then. He met him later. You were there because people, you were among hundreds who were arrested protesting for jobs for Puerto Rican and black construction workers? Yes. Mm -hmm. So that started your relationship with Malcolm X. It right. was uh, just really a month before John F. Kennedy was assassinated, would be assassinated in Dallas, October 16th, 1963 right. was the day that you met right. him. October 16th is when I met Malcolm, and, and JFK Ma and was killed he on was November killed. 22nd. John Kennedy was killed on November 22nd. Huh? Mm -hmm. But yeah. for the next two years, you would meet with Malcolm regularly. Can you talk about the meetings, the sessions that he had that you would attend? Well, I, well they had regular meetings, you know. Uh, but it seems like Elijah and Malcolm's problems were getting a little more serious, and I think because FBI played a role in it, and of course they knew which ones of the people in NOI may have had some kind of uh, ill feelings. The nation of Islam. Mm -hmm. uh, and as things got more serious, there were more articles in the newspaper, and everyone knew, though, that Malcolm's life was in danger. And uh, but also. About that time, I didn't realize till you said right now that Kennedy was killed only two months. Only a month after you only and Malcolm X first oh, met. Because it was November, right. and his. And it was the last two was years two also of Malcolm X's life, 1963 to 1965, when he was assassinated right. as well. Mm -hmm. You received Malcolm X wrote you postcards right. through his trip through Africa and his journey to Mecca. Mm -hmm. Yes. What did he write to you in these postcards? Well, he sent 11 and uh, from nine countries. There were two, co uh, uh, yeah, two countries he went twice. But 
At the time that he went to Africa, all the major African conferences were happening. Two were even happening in England. Uh, and Malcolm went to all of these, and of course, all the most progressive presidents of African nations were at these conferences. So he got to meet almost all the top ones. I mean, whether it's uh, Ghana, Nkrumah, or Tanzania, who's Tanzania. I can't even think of them, but he met about 11 of them. And they were as excited to meet him. He wanted to learn all about the different countries in Africa, and he, well, they, the Africans, and he talked about the colonization that took place. Well, it could have happened from even as early as the 1600s, but it was mostly 17 and 1800. And the big day that we got to remember is, I think it was 1885, uh, that was the, where all those European countries took over African countries. What was the name of that? Uh, oh gosh, I would forget the name. Wait, it might come back to us. Well, let uh, me ask you about this. Um, when Malcolm came back, he was also talking about an expanded attitude about um, human rights, something he was had talked about before as well. Not so much civil rights, mm -hmm. but the rights of African Americans to uh, be fully equal was an issue of international human rights. Oh, yes. And that's why Malcolm thought that uh, this civil rights thing was really nothing, because African people don't have to wait till some president of another country, even the United States, would give civil rights. I mean, Africans already have human rights. And he felt, too, that it was too narrowed down when they would be using words that they were just fighting for civil rights. And, and I think what was so wonderful is that Malcolm taught his group American, well, black Americans here, about the history of Africa, where they became colonized. And then he told the people in Africa what was happening here, how blacks were treated, and, and that many of the African young people didn't even know anything, hardly, about slavery, because this country n never told them anything. And Yuri, so, go ahead. Yuri Kojama, he also came to your house to meet with survivors of the atomic bombing of yes. Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Habakusha, the right. survivors. Can you talk about that? Yeah. Well, we were all so happy, I mean, especially uh, Japanese Americans and even other Asian Americans that Malcolm would be interested. But Malcolm was interested in every group, and especially when he would hear the kind of harassments and all the negative things that, hap that always seemed to be happening to people of color. And he knew about Asian history so well, we couldn't believe it. I mean, Yuri Kochiyama remembering Malcolm X, 43 years ago tomorrow, on February 21st, 1965, Malcolm X was assassinated in the Audubon Ballroom in Harlem. He had just taken the stage when shots rang out, riddling his body with bullets. He was 39. Yuri Kochiyama ran to the stage. She had been there to listen to him that day, and she cradled his head. Yuri Kochiyama and her family also interned as a result of FDR's executive order after Pearl Harbor bombing, with over 100,000 other Japanese and Japanese Americans in this country. That does it for our broadcast. If you'd like a copy, you can go to our website at democracynow.org. Tune in tomorrow for a special hour with musical legend Willie Nelson. He'll be here in the Firehouse studio with his guitar, Trigger. Democracy Now! produced by Mike Berkshire, Faldo Caduz, Aaron Mate, Anjali Comet, Jeffrey Hagerman, Steve Martinez, Nicole Salazar, Robbie Karen. Our website again, democracynow.org. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks so much for joining us.